what is up youtube welcome back to the channel today i figured i would do a pull start update they announced a few things this week so i want to go over that give you guys my thoughts and then we'll look at the chart to see where we could head in the coming weeks the market is doing great today and pull start seems to be holding its own but let me know your thoughts in the comments below i try to respond to everyone and before we start do me a favor smash the like button subscribe to the channel i do videos every week and let's get started So that news is from Polestar announcing their expansion into the Korean market. On Tuesday, Polestar announced its launch into South Korea. The company is going to introduce the Polestar 2 starting January 18th. As you guys know, the Polestar 2 is their second model. It's the five-door fastback with 400 plus horsepower. And a quote from the CEO Jason Ham: we will be introducing Polestar 2 to our Korean customers at a reasonable and attractive price. We have compared the pricing of EVs and we are aware of the government's EV policy. Polestar Korea will provide the most attractive price than any other market. Now, by no means is the Polestar cheap, but they are going to include a 5-year, 100,000 insurance on every purchase, and they will be able to service those across 31 different service centers. And they are also planning to introduce at least one new vehicle into the market each year until 2024. Customers will also be able to completely do this process online. That means order the car, reserve the test driving, and then check when the cars will be received. But they're also planning to invest 50 billion won, which is equivalent to about 42 million. And those funds will be used to create 10 physical showrooms and that's where customers will be able to physically go test drive look at the car and decide if they want to purchase one and it does look like these showrooms will be up and running soon it, it says space bussin will be coming in january and then destination jeju not sure if i said that right will be coming in the first quarter of 2022 so that is right around the corner so my thoughts i think this is great news it's showing that they're expanding their market i think with this one we'll make it 11 markets that they're currently in now but the downside is that they are going to have to inject a lot of money into these markets. Obviously, 41 million is not a lot. They are going to have like 1.2 billion after the mergers close. But still, this does give us that realization that high growth companies usually acquire a lot of money. Could be like dilution down the road and stuff. So that is something that we always need to take into account. Overall, though, I think this was a pretty good press release. It's giving us another market where we can start selling these vehicles. And that'll help meet our goals for 2022 and so on. Plus, they will have a decent balance sheet after closing their merger. So I'm excited to see how they expand into this market. So that video showcases the release of the VivaLeth browser. I don't know if I said that right, so I'm just going to say Viva to make it easier on me. Um, but that is specifically designed for Polestar 2. It is actually the first available browser for Android Automotives. So there is no other browser available for the infotainment system of cars except for this one. So at first I was confused why Polestar didn't decide to use a Google Chrome since they're already using the Google Maps and everything else. But after reading this, I'm guessing the automotive OS system is different and Google may not have that released yet. So I think this is great in the short term, but I do hope that down the road they can provide updates where they can start supporting other browsers. But that's down the road. Let's talk about now. The Viva browser is going to allow normal browser functionality. So you can do the tab browsing, streaming ability, online shopping. And now that comes with security measures. The app also features built-in ad blocker, tracking protection, privacy-friendly translation tools, and encrypted sync functionality. Polestar will not store your data, so everything's going to be stored in the Viva browser as a user. And that's great because it's telling us Polestar is not interested in collecting data and reselling it like you know other companies try to do. They are just simply providing more functionality for the customer. And here's a quote from the Polestar CEO. It is great we could answer our own community's desire for a browser. Now there is a whole new world of content you can explore in the Polestar 2. 
again that's just stating the fact that the Polestar team is listening to the customers and all the community and they're continually trying to improve the car with every iteration uh, but I think the best part is that it is going to be free for download and it's already going to be available in Europe, North America and Asia Pacific markets. Now there's an asterisk to this and I'll show you guys why. Uh, it's not going to be available in China or South Korea. And then some other restrictions is you won't be able to access the browser when you're driving. And that's just for safety purposes. And there's one thing on here that I didn't see but I've read in a different article. Is that they are working on integrating a voice control down the road. So that is something that you can look for in the future release. So my overall thought, I think this is great, it's a good start, but I will say after watching the video you can see the man was playing video games on there, but it looked kind of awkward or maybe uncomfortable. I'm hoping that down the road they can change the interior layout. For now I think the layout is fine, but down the road if they plan to work on autopilot, it would be nice to have a bigger screen and maybe have it horizontal. And also redesign the center console that will give it a more spacious look. So definitely hope for a bigger screen design, uh, as you see Tesla's already doing that. And that's just thinking ahead for autopilot, so you won't really need to drive. You can mainly interact with the screen and it would be nice to have that. For example, if you look over the years, phones keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I would think that's probably what's going to happen with the screens here since you won't really need to drive the car. It'll be more of a self-driving computer at that point. So something for Polestar to consider, at least those are my thoughts. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So we'll wrap up the video by looking at the chart. It looks like we held this monthly and the weekly level pretty well. Came down to 11, bounced off. There are some pretty good buying opportunities here, so congrats to those that have added shares around this level. And since then, it looks like it took the recent news quite well. We started around $11, and now we are up more than half a dollar. We actually got to a high of $11.80. I think if we can break past $11.80 back into 12 territory, we can definitely see $14 fairly quickly. I think the main thing holding this down is fear in the market. That is causing very low volume. But once the fear subsides, people will definitely be buying this more willingly, and we can eventually see $14. Let me know what you guys see in the chart. For me, the main thing is that we held the monthly level here and we're now trying to get back above this 50MA line here. Well guys, that's all I have for today's video. Make sure you smash the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. If I don't upload before Christmas, I wish you guys a happy holiday and I'll see you guys in the next video.